Hey, uh, Jared, congratulations on the win. Um, was there any hesitation taking this fight with the fact that you've got a guy who, you know, most people didn't know a lot about and you had to take it on like a couple days notice? Absolutely no hesitation whatsoever. I'm just happy to have a fight, you know, especially given the situation. Mm -hmm. You know, very rarely do people get fights when people fall out during fight week. Right. So, um, Baruch Hashem. For sure. How did you go about kind of researching him and everything like that? Did you leave that up to your coaches? Oh, YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a few fights on those, and uh, yeah. So, yeah. And, and just him as an opponent uh, in, in the cage and everything, was there anything that sort of uh, kind of was unexpected uh, on his end, perhaps? His head was harder than a lot of, I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. um, he, he was definitely more resilient. Mm -hmm. um, I landed some big shots with my right hand in the first and second round. And uh, I wobbled him, you know. Yeah. I could definitely see it in his face. But uh, he stayed in there, and uh, dude fought through it all. And to the very end, he fought. So uh, it, it, for a UFC debut, you know, it says a lot about who he is and what he can do in there. And how much does this win mean to you? I know now you're a full-time fighter. You've sort of gone all in on this. Do you feel like it's paying off? Oh, yes, most definitely. Um, as you can tell, ugh, I've got abs. They're not quite washboard abs yet. Yeah. But um, with the uh, tutelage and the uh, training I'm going to be getting at the lab because I'm moving down there, the, um, you know, uh, Middleweight is right around the corner. You know, the weight keeps coming off. I weighed in today at 212. I'm usually at 222, 225 fight day. I was 212 today, you know, so um, who knows? We'll see what happens in the future. How do you feel fighting on the Sabbath? I don't, I don't feel good about it at all, but um, it's the world we live in, right? I mean, I worked, I've been working on the Sabbath. I've been working every other Sabbath when I worked for the FAA, and uh, in the world we live in, it's something we have to do to survive. And um, something I'm going to have to pay for when Mashiach returns. So, Would you prefer fighting on a Saturday night as opposed to a I Friday would night? Definitely prepare, not, I would prefer never to fight on a sh Shabbat. Yeah. So um, maybe uh, next time they offer to fight on, yeah. on Shabbat, I'll be like, no, I can't do it. Did you, did yeah. you consider doing that? Or? I did. I definitely considered it. But the fact that um, I quit my job and I needed, I, I needed to fight to quit my job. And when they called the fight off, I was uh, it was a trying moment, but I didn't, you know, I didn't wear, I didn't wane, I didn't worry, you know, I left it in the hands of uh, of uh, Yahovah, and uh, he pulled through. He brought in, he had, there was an opponent already there, so the wheels were already in motion. Why did you quit the job? Now, well, um, you know, it's not fun working ten hours a day, and then going to try to train, get all the training you can get at night, you know, as opposed to training in the morning coming home, getting some rest, and then going training in the evening. You know, um, that's how a lot of people get injured. And on top of that, you know, when I was working, I was a heavyweight. I was fat, right. eating and sitting and doing nothing, and I wasn't happy, you know. Um, I'm happy now, you know. I get to wake up and work out. I'm happy. I like doing that. I get to uh, speak, see my family more, you know, and um, which is the main thing. You know, I get to see my family more, which is definitely the main thing. Spending 10 hours away from my wife and kids was never fun for me. It was just something I had to do. And um, with the contract I have with the UFC, with this win, you know, I'm set for the rest of the year. So I could fight two more times this year, and I'm just, that's just extra. How many so, years were you with FAA before you uh, to quit? Eight years. Eight years. Yeah, from 09 to. Do you think the job is there for you when you come back? I'll, I'm gonna always have the knowledge. Okay. So all I have to do is update my resume yeah. and apply. So. What did you do? Update with Cage Fighter? Yeah. <laughs> you know, your, your, your last fight in Brooklyn was, was such a big step up in competition. There was a lot of buzz surrounding you going into that fight, and you were fighting a former title contender. Was that a tough pill to swallow, or did you feel like that was okay? You know, this was your chance to fight a guy. There were some lessons learned, and now you kind of go back to the drawing board. How did you take that? That was exactly how I took it. Actually, I took it as a victory because I was able to sit in there with the number two or, or number three guy in the world. He took me down, yeah, because he couldn't stand with me. But when he took me down, you know, he couldn't couldn't get much off. So that gave me more d confidence in my defensive uh, jujitsu, as well as as well as in my striking. Okay. So um, with confidence, you know, comes victories. So and, and is it possible that your next fight is at 185? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I can I'll, I'll bounce back and forth. So it could be, but then I'll come back to light heavyweight. It, does, it doesn't matter. It seems, so. it seems like the light heavyweight division is a little bit more wide open, though, right now. Middleweight's kind of in a log jam. Uh, did you kind of look at that maybe and say, hey, it might be easier for me? No. Um, with it being in a log jam, if I went down to middleweight, that would make it more exciting. Right. 
because it's me. You know what I'm saying? So, um, um, which is why they gave me the, uh, which is why they want to keep me in the light heavyweight division. You know, they need fresh blood. You know, exciting strikers and um, new blood. You know, new fighters. So. Um, I'm here. I'm not just going to stick around in the light heavyweight division because somebody else thinks it's the right thing to do. I'm going to do what I know is best for myself. And if you did fight at middleweight, any opponents in mind uh, as far as, you know, uh, what's next? Each and every one of them, as long as they pay me. That's how many people in the middleweight division? At least 40, 50 people. That's 50 checks I can get. Yeah. <laughs> so bring them on. Yeah. And how are you celebrating tonight? I am going to call my wife, you know, talk to my kids. And uh, I don't drink. Maybe uh, <laughs> hang out with the uh, with my team. That's okay. about it. I don't go out. I don't go out and party, you know. So, mm -hmm. and today is Shabbat, as a matter of fact. So I'm going to go home and do some tour study. Is actually what I'm going to do. You said something you were, during the weigh-in where you were like, "Do y'all know what IBS is?" What were you saying? IBS. Yeah. <laughs> like what was that about? I is that IBS. Okay. ILS. I said IBS, huh? I, hear I meant to say ILS. Okay, what is that? Um, invisible lat syndrome. Oh. Okay. I've been seeing it all week. All week since I've been here. People walking around like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on now, guys. Yeah. Anyway, I can I can run on a day. I can run on for about that for, on for days. So. As you were coming in, you, uh, you were praising Brian Stan, I believe. Or, or, or as being as your good luck. Charm. Oh yeah, he's my good luck charm. Every every fight he's called of mine's, I have won. It was an exciting fight, and I acquired a bonus on each of those fights. So keep the trend going. If you're looking, whoever gives the bonus checks, you know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be hard because it's been nothing but decisions except for one submission. So uh, hook a brother up. You know, I just quit my job. I need to buy insurance now. You know what I'm saying? That that that's not easy. So hook a brother up. Don't ask the man. Is the UFC, have you had discussions with them about going to middleweight? Are they open to it? Or? No, they can't tell me what to do. They just pay me to fight. I'm an individual contractor. And that, and that, uh, how they, how they classify it? I'm an independent contractor. I can do what I want, as long as it's within the octagon, of course. They have exclusivity rights and stuff all like that. But, uh, they tell you what to wear. Well, I mean, they tell me what to wear, but it's functional. You know, I, I mean, I, I'll do it butt naked. It don't matter to me. <laughs> Actually, I won't do it butt naked. <laughs> edit that shit out, please. But um, <laughs> um, they pay me. They pay me to work, even though it's not a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? They pay me. So um, I worked on Shabbat when I worked for the uh, FAA because they paid me. You know, in, in the world we live in, this world is run by money. The money is the world's idol now. It used to be wooden figures and stone figures way back when, and now it's money. So people worship money and all the things that they can get with money. And actually, it's the love of money, which is the idolatrous thing of the world right now. But um, it's the world we live in, and to some form or fashion, we have to conform. Otherwise, we can just completely separate ourselves and just live off the land, which is eventually what I want to do. But I need money. You know, I got to build a house, I got to buy land, and I got to buy animals. So it starts from somewhere. I said Texas in. Hell yeah. Do you put tefillin on in the morning? Do I put tefillin? No, I don't. You don't? Not yet. I'm still learning. I'm, I'm, I'm still learning a lot. There's a lot to learn. But um, I'm still learning a lot. And, um, you didn't bring the television. You know, <laughs> here's the thing, right? 3, 329, I have to report at 330. I'm in my room at 329, not thinking about anything. I get a call from... I can't remember, Roger or Ron or somebody. Hey, are you gonna show up to check in? I'm like, at what time? 3.30, I look at my watch, it's 3.29. I'm like, oh shit, we just called to have room service ordered. Oh. So I'm ready to eat, and they're like, hey, you gotta come fight. So I just grabbed my stuff, I grabbed a cup, a mouthpiece, and a bag, and I ran downstairs. Oh. I completely forgot my micro tali, and I also have a tali katan, and I uh, completely forgot that too. You didn't get to eat? I didn't, well, they, you know, they give us snacks when oh, you get okay. here. So I had some pretzels and stuff like that. <laughs> Cool. Cool. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, brother.